Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. So, Greg, it's finally going to happen. How many days do you think this will take to get 12 jurors and six alternates? Could take as long as 10 days, maybe two weeks. Um, but it's really up to the judge uh, to limit the amount of voir dire, the questioning of the jurors, and, you know, move forward. You know, but I must tell you, I've never seen such a tangled, torturous prosecution mm -hmm. that would be brought against no other person except Trump. It's, it's punitive, it's politically driven, brag, contorting the law, taking a business record misdemeanor barred by the statute of limitations, and magically inflating it into 34 felonies, as Eric Sean pointed out. To do that, he had to attach it to a supposed election law violation. Well, it's not. Federal Election Commission investigated, and they said this is uh, perfectly legal. It is not a campaign donation. The DOJ concluded there's no crime here. But, you know, enter Alvin Bragg, who's charging under federal law, even though he's a local prosecutor and has no jurisdiction and authority to do that. But the judge is letting him get away with it. So I, I just got to stay on that point about the judge, because Michael Avenatti, who's no former, uh, no, no fan of the former president, had this to say on Twitter. He talked about... Uh, the DA encouraging Cohen and Daniels uh, to go out there and do media interviews. And then he followed it up by this. He said, to my friends on the left who insist that they want to preserve democracy and justice, you should be equally outraged by this. Constitutional protections against uh, either exist for uh, including the former president or they don't exist at all. What is happening in this hush money case is a travesty. So if you got Michael Avenatti, who has spent his career, now he's on the other side of justice, trying to take down Donald Trump, saying that the judge is not being fair right here when it comes to a gag order. How can the former president expect a fair trial? Well, the gag order is a clear violation of the First Amendment, but judges get away with it because by the time it's challenged on appeal, the case is over. But this case is also something else, a classic <clears throat> example of unequal justice and selective prosecution. Hillary Clinton did pretty much the same thing. She too used a lawyer to secretly pay for the phony steel dossier and booking it as legal expenses. She was fined by the FEC, but she wasn't prosecuted and neither was Barack Obama, even though he was fined a whopping $375,000 for hiding donors and keeping illegal contributions. But if your last name is Trump, the standard of justice is mm -hmm. completely different and turned on its head. You're right, it's a double standard. Uh, Greg, let's talk about there, the prosecutor's star witness. It's Michael Cohen, who used to be <laughs> Trump's lawyer, exactly. We chuckle because he's flip-flopped so many times in the past, we don't know what to believe. He's been in prison for federal charges himself. So here is a reminder of what he has said, because he told the grand jury a year ago his goal was to tell the truth. But what is the truth? He flip-flops. Listen. I will be in D.C. and in New York, uh, anywhere Mr. Trump right, deems let me ask necessary. This I'll be there. I did not want to go to the White House. I was offered jobs. Not only is Donald Trump not a racist, he believes that all people are part of one race, the human race. I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. The words the media should be using to describe Mr. Trump are generous, compassionate, principled, empathetic, kind, humble, honest, and genuine. He is capable of behaving kindly, but he is not kind. He is capable of committing acts of generosity but he is not generous. He is capable of being loyal, but he is fundamentally disloyal. Greg, how can this be the star witness? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cohen, who was never much of a lawyer, is good, it seems, at only one thing, lying prodigiously. You know, Bragg's theory in this case is, well, Cohen pled guilty to campaign finance crime, so Donald Trump must be guilty too. Well, that's not the law. 
the plea of one person does not determine the guilt of another. It's not even admissible evidence at trial. And Cohen gratuitously pled guilty to a non-crime just to curry favor with the feds in exchange for leniency for his many other crimes, including fraud. But get this, recently in court, he recanted what he stated in his sworn plea deal, <laughs> which means he either again committed perjury in the plea itself or perjury in his recent court testimony, and that prompted the judge to call Michael Cohen a serial perjurer. Mm. I can't imagine any objective juror believing anything he has to say. Any half-decent defense attorney will utterly destroy Cohen on cross-examination and expose his litany of lies. All right, uh, thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. That uh, instant analysis there. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.